Well, welcome back, everybody, to the 29th episode of The Poor Choice Show. I'm your host, Chris, here with my co-host, David, and special guest, Dave Sr. And to Jack Black, Shania Twain, Leanne Rimes, Daniel Stern, and Honey Boo Boo. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Wait, so Leanne and Shania have the same birthday? They do. That's pretty funny. They honey boo do. Who is that? I don't know. She was that <laughs> little uh, little fat blonde chick that was like famous on YouTube for a little while. I don't know if it's like, the little girl or the mom or what. Was she like the catch me outside? Yeah, like that's the kind that, of fame she had. Oh, different person though. Yeah. Okay. She made a lot of poor choices. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I know. Or, yeah. Yeah, I know who she is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are we gonna make Honey our boo? Are we gonna make our poor choices? Or am I gonna open my beer? My finger's starting to hurt. Now let's make some poor choices. Pretty cool. That's that one. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. Subscribe. I uh I didn't forget about that part. We've only done it twenty nine times. I mean, yeah. Well, with all the uh the retakes, it's probably been like thirty five. <laughs> Do you know who Daniel Stern is? Um, I don't think so. No. What if I said, Harry, I'm going in. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's okay. him. That's gotcha. That's him. Okay. Well, dad said he's, uh, I guess ever since he, that's a weird looking barm. Look at that. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. It's very yellow. Looking. And like bubbly, it looks like cottage cheese. Anyways, back mine to looks work. a lot more normal, normal for you. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Dad said he's been watching all our episodes. Yeah. Not did all, you of them, but most of them. Did you watch today's? I did not. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. I was nervous because I, I was... saw it, but I didn't watch it. Okay. Because we have. Hey, a... So you saw the thumbnail of Joe Biden hugging Anne Frank. He wasn't hugging her. He was sniffing <laughs> <No>. her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, whatever he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I had dude, I had that I had that thumbnail made and posted and then I got the idea. I was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna redo this. And then I had to put Biden behind her. So I don't know if had to is the right word, but I'm glad you did. I'm also glad I did. <laughs> Dad, move the mic a little closer to your face. Please, David. Please. Yeah, there you go. his matters have escaped him. Well, I get them from my dad. Apparently not. Uh, I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Hmm. Probably from your mother, but that's another show. That was your poor choice. <laughs> ah, see what now, you did there. Apparently a good choice or you wouldn't be here. Not a, not, not a lot of father the fatherly love here. <laughs> Speaking of fatherly love, we're going to follow up on Jenna's thing. And it's kind of kind of ridiculous how this is just all turned back on me because this initially started as a question for Chris is just something to talk about. And right, now it's like a, right, it now did. it's like a family affair. <laughs> so I had asked Chris if he was a cop and his mom was like, uh, Chris, I accidentally just killed someone. Uh, I, I fled the scene, freaking out. I don't know what to do. Would he turn her in? And somehow that flipped on me to with Jenna. So we asked Jenna, and Jenna said, uh, she kind of beat around the bush a lot, like basically said she'd have my back, but don't tell her anything because she can't keep a secret. <laughs> right. And that conversation led to dad would have our back. And I said, doubt it. So if I called you and I said, right. Dad, I accidentally just killed someone. I fled. I freaked out. I don't know what to do. Are you helping me stay out of prison? Or are you like, nope, we're going in now? Hmm. I'd have to know more of the background, the circumstances behind it. Hmm. What exactly happened? Okay. 
Why? And I can't help but think of the series Your Honor right now. Yeah, and that's exactly what Jenna said. And I said, that's exactly what made me think of it. So say say the same circumstances. But you're not a judge. You're you're you. And that's can you, what happened um, and I came to you. Can you tell me the circumstances? I actually haven't seen it. So Brian Cranston is a judge. And okay. his his son is like driving through a bad neighborhood and mm-hmm. hits this kid like a mob boss's kid. So it's, I guess, not same circumstances, but uh, and he freaks out and he runs. Wasn't he it was on like accident? A, it was an accident. Attack. Wasn't it an asthma attack or something? I don't know if he was having. No, he dropped his inhaler and he was reaching down in the passenger footwell because like it was having an grab- asthma attack at the time. Yeah, but that's not why he hit him. He hit him because he was reaching right. down, trying to grab. Yeah. And then basically Brian Cranston helps cover it up. Okay. So different circumstances. It. It's not It's not a mob boss's kid. You're not a judge. It's just me. I accidentally hit someone. I know they're dead, but I freaked out. And you're you up in New York. I call. I tell you, what are you doing? Uh, catching a flight down here. And then? Uh, see what I can do to help you out. Turning you in now. Sounds like he's got your back, David. Hmm. Well, one point to Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> and me. And I me. You I said hurt. he'd have your back. <laughs> yeah. Jenna said, <laughs> he's got nothing to lose. All right. Well, um, we already know the answer to mom. And we discussed that too. Basically, mom would like, right. like, try to pitch some story that was like trying too hard to provide an alibi that she would like over exaggerate and yep. would basically you'd be guilty. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, but hmm, okay, well, I stand corrected. There you go. So you had no faith, no faith at all. Now, if you were still working. Would you? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you sound disappointed in that. <laughs> yeah, no. I just, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, that he would? You're yeah. my son. You do what you can to protect your children. Yeah, well, yeah, you have something to lose at that point. Yeah. Yeah, you. But, yeah. yeah. And you've got yeah. more. Well, let's get, let's get back to this whole uh, breaking up or... Whatever dad was saying as a a bachelor for the however many times you're a bachelor now. We're going to we're going to play a game. Sounds like a roast. uh, uh, Just just a jab. (laughs) (laughs) After I I was going to risk my life and career to save you. Hypothetically, (laughs) hypothetically. (laughs) Just just kind of can I rethink that first question? My answer to it. Nope. (laughs) Even if you do, I edit the videos. So I want you guys to build your perfect woman for $15. The first category is career. For $5, she's a Fortune 500 company owner. For $4, she's an anesthesiologist. For $3, she's a legal aid. For $2, she's a bartender. And for $1, she's unemployed. Okay, I have my answer. Well, what is it? I'm going to go the three dollar route. Would you say paralegal, legal aid, paralegal? Yeah, legal aid. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Dad, uh, Fortune 500, Oof. five dollars. Spend, spend a sugar mama. <laughs> well, okay. the next one is going to be looks. So for five dollars, we have Megan Fox. For four dollars, we have Jennifer Lopez. $3, Taylor Swift, $2, Julia Roberts, and $1, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's crazy that you put Taylor Swift above Julia Roberts. I'm just yeah. going to say that much. Well, it's Julia Roberts now, so with the wrinkles on her face and all. Mm. Okay. Um, who was the $4? Jennifer Lopez. And it's now? Yeah. Which is about mm. the same as 20 years ago. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to spend $2 with Julia Roberts. I'm doing the same. Okay. No uh, no Roseanne takers. <laughs> nope. <Negative>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. 
All right, the next is going to be Hobby. For $5, we have Boating. For $4, we have Sports. $3, we have Shopping. $2 is Reading. And $1 is Sleeping. <laughs> what a hobby. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you picked Roseanne, you'd go with Sleeping. <laughs> right. <laughs> you'd have a lot of money left over. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to go with Boating. Okay. What was number? That was what, the five? That was five. That was five. That was five, right. Okay. What was number two? Two was reading. I'll go with two. Okay. So you want to go out on the boat and she's like, I think I'm going to stay back and read. No, she's going to read on the boat. Exactly. No, she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't like boating. She's afraid of the water. That wasn't said. I'm telling you now. All right, so Chris, going into the last one, you've got uh, three, five. five two, yep, and Dad, you have, let's see, you went five, two, two, nine, six. Hmm. Okay, good for you. <laughs> well, that's, that's boring. The last one is red flag. For $5, no red flags. For $4, they're always on their phone. $3, her kids suck. $2, they're always talking about their ex. And one dollar, Jenna doesn't approve. Well, I'm going to go one dollar. I got money to burn, so I'll go number five. No, no red flags. Yeah, why didn't Why didn't you go? You got five bucks, Chris. You just want just to spite Jenna. Wait, I thought there was one more question. No, nope. no, that was it. Oh, then I'll go five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, uh, pretty much the same thing. Chris, uh, your girl likes boating. Dad, yours likes reading. Dad, dad owns uh, like Pfizer or something. Uh, yeah, so he is Julia Roberts running the company. I have Julia Roberts working her way up to running the company. Which was, and I have a yacht that she can that, read on. Uh, no, 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 you, you got have a, you have you, a dinghy, <laughs> <laughs> but she likes going on it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't uh, isn't isn't that what Aaron Brockovich was? She was a. Yeah, she was like a legal aid. Mm -hmm. I know, I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Not movies. Well, <laughs> I, well, that movie. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, there you go. Very good. I think that went well. Um, no, I thought I thought I had one more question. That's why I was like, "Well, I'll spend a dollar." I was like, "You just to, just save to piss Jenna four off? more." No, I th <laughs> I just figured I was like, I got four more if I go with the one. Gotcha. Um, I do have a little like just something I was thinking about the other day, which was like games we played as kids and seeing how maybe they're similar. Maybe games, Dave, you played as kids or if you remember David playing these games as kids or David, what games you remember playing as a kid? Outside, my favorite, my outside, favorite game outside. was uh, it was get your ass in the house and finish your homework. <laughs> OK, but when you weren't in the house, what? You know, elementary, middle school. What kind of what were you doing outside? Usually, just throwing, throwing the football or the baseball around, jumping on the trampoline. Okay. Uh, one time, we—I don't know if I talked about this last time we had Dad on. Um, it was at one of our neighbors' high school graduation parties. Remember going to that, Dad? Yep. And Lauren had gone in the house and stole some of her grandmother's Malibu. So we walked How old is Lauren at this point? Lauren's two years younger than me. I was probably like 16 and she was probably like 14. And then Josh mm -hmm. was there. It was, you know, all the, not all the neighborhood kids, but uh, we walked around the neighborhood with Malibu, but we ended up going to dad, the house that you lived in, in Saunders Point. When you're on your porch looking diagonally right, that house on the corner there. Yes. So they used to have a bunch of lawn gnomes. Yep. And that and that night we went and we took the lawn gnomes and we placed them all around the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a harmless little thing, though. Yeah. I mean, so that was a good game, I guess. That's no game. Okay. Well, see, I played hide and seek and red light, green light. And <laughs> you had to hide. We hid the the lawn gnomes, and she had to seek them out. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, how about some? Did you ever play Smear the Queer, David? Yeah, but not as okay. like a, a little kid. We used to do that in Joe's backyard. Mm-hmm. We just give someone the football and then tackle. Yeah. How about uh, Spud? It sounds familiar. Does that ring any bells? So somebody would throw a ball up in the air, some kind of ball that can be thrown, whatever it is, and then you catch it, and then once it's thrown up, everyone else has to run as far away as they can until you catch it. And then once you catch it, you can spell out the word spud, S-P-U-D, with each step. So you only get four steps, as big as you can take, to hit somebody with it, and then they're out. It sounds familiar. So after you catch it, they have to stop moving? Once you catch it, they stop, and then you get your four steps to try and hit somebody. So the slowest kids always got out first. Right. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Um, Did you ever play... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, that makes me think of like uh, 500. Yeah, yeah, very similar to 500. Mm-hmm. How about some poo sticks? You ever play poo sticks? Must be a Westminster thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a Winnie the Pooh thing, hence the poo. Um, like you stand on a bridge. Hence above- the poo, like it was completely <laughs> obvious. When, when last week we did, uh, we did a Mad Lib of you shitting on your girlfriend, and we've talked about like if shitting on an animal was a sport, like... <laughs> And I'm supposed to just know, yeah, poo, we like Winnie the Pooh. Like Winnie the Pooh. So you stand on a bridge above a creek or a river or whatever, and you, you grab your stick and everyone drops them at the same time. And then you race across to the other side and whoever's stick comes across first wins. Poo sticks. Okay. I feel like I've seen that in a movie. Okay. But you don't watch a lot of those. <laughs> no. So probably, you know. Yeah. Probably wasn't in a movie. Why are they call poo sticks? Um, it was from an original Winnie the Pooh show where they played that game. That's probably what it was. Oh, okay. So not a movie. Well, it was probably on VHS, okay. but, um, the only other ones I had, I had guns. Like you played guns as a kid, right? You just run around pretending to shoot each other. Cops and robbers. Yeah, sure. You had two teams and, oh, I got you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Ha ha ha. I wonder um, if that's how gangs started. <laughs> No, no, no. They literally played guns. <laughs> um, and aside from that, the other one I had was ghost, which is you kind of you have a home base and somebody's the ghost and they have to hide and you have to get back to that home base without them tagging you, basically. So like capture the flag esque. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. But everyone has the one central yeah goal to get to right 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 okay no did you play any of those dad um no what what did you play like hide and seek red light green light um red rover robbers red rover um tag tag yeah kickball handball Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm Chicken in the parking lot of the gas station up the street that you still deny telling me about? Uh, no. Hmm. Can I get some some context there? <laughs> Apparently not, because he says he didn't do it. But he told me a story one time of there's like a little like strip mall with like a drugstore and gas station up from where Grandma and Grandpa lived, and he told me that when he was in his teens. That he mm-hmm. and I could have sworn you said your El Camino or someone's El Camino that you yeah. played chicken I, in that I parking never, lot. I never did it, but yeah, we were in the back of our friend's uh, El Camino, and he would do it with other people, but I never did it. Like chicken with a car? Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever God. hit. He's, he's, he said he'd never do it, like because it's stupid. Yet he's in the back of the El Camino while they're playing chicken. Well, I was young. Yeah. Oof. Oof. So. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And on that note, I think Dave's hungry. He wants to eat dinner. Yeah. Go eat. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> <Okay>. for coming. <laughs> My yeah. pleasure. Good to, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Spend Enjoy. more time getting that ready than you were on here. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, man. I cleaned my bathroom this morning. Like, deep cleaned it. All day I've had this, like, bleach chemical headache. Oh, it's horrible. Did you use that beer from a couple weeks ago? I should have. I really, you know what? I'm going to pour, I should have poured that into my goddamn jambalaya. Damn it. I I don't know if you should, something that you would use as cleaning product probably shouldn't be something that goes in your jambalaya. 
Mm. I mean, it would cook off the. Yeah, you're right. Mm. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> really bad. It'd be like really bad. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I'll just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, just clean with it. Next time your Windex <laughs> bottle's empty, just pour it in there and use that. The only thing I use Windex for is the coffee table you made me and like the mirror in my bathroom. I don't want to pour it on that table. It, it's a nice table. You get all sticky. You get very sticky. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Let's talk about how the last of these NFL teams got their names. Is this the last one? It's the last one. Wow. Okay. We have the NFC East. Um, any any guesses? Um, I'll start with your boys, your Cowboys. I think that one's pretty obvious. Texas is such a historically, you know, yep. All the the, the history of ranching and and Cowboys is it's right. still it's still strong in Texas to today. But I mean, even back in the day, huge. But um, yeah, I mean, the history of Cowboys and ranches in Texas. Okay. Any of the other ones you got guesses for? Um, if I had to guess on the Eagles, I would think it has to do with just the country and America and the Liberty Bell was there and the Eagle is on a lot of our coins and our dollars and is a symbol of our country would be my guess. Okay. Either of the others? Giants. I want to say Giants is just one of those, like, it's an old school team. It's one of those old school names. That's like, it sounds fierce, like Giants, you know? Um, and the Redskins, I, my guess would be there was probably some sort of tribe in the DC metropolitan area at some point that they wanted to pay homage to for wiping them out and building the, <laughs> the country's capital there. <laughs> ah, we'll name our football team after them. So it's like, like the opposite of the bucks. Like the bucks were like, this dude fucked us up. So we're going to name our team after him. They're mm-hmm. like, we fucked them up, so let's let's name our yeah. team after them. The Washington Genocides just doesn't have the same ring to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a reach back to Auschwitz. <laughs> 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 okay, well let's uh let's see how you did. So for the Giants, Tim Mara originally named the I'm probably I don't even know how to say that if that's even gonna be right. I'll say Tim Mara? Mar- what do you think? M-A-R-A. I'm going to say Mara. Okay. Tim Mara originally named the team after the National League Baseball Giants, who were a longtime favorite in New York. At the time, baseball was the king of professional sports, so owner Tim Mara wanted the same name recognition in hopes that fans would support both clubs. By the way, the baseball Giants got their name from all the giant buildings that made up New York City. Oh, Okay. So the the Giants okay. in San Francisco used to be in New York. So they yes. wanted to kind of match that to get the same recognition. Because it was such a hot team. Right. And sport and yeah, baseball was the thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I the giant building thing, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I never I never knew that. So for the Eagles, in exchange for an entry fee of twenty five hundred dollars, the Bell Ray Group Damn was awarded the assets of the failed Yellow Jackets organization, drawing inspiration from the insignia of the centerpiece of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal, specifically the National Recovery Act's Blue Eagle. Bell and Ray named the new franchise the Philadelphia Eagles, with Bell as president and general manager and Ray as head coach. Oh, Bell? Bell. No E, though. Okay, so I think I was kind of close. Yeah. I don't I don't know what the... Uh, National Recovery Act is or but it was US and Eagle related so yeah. yeah 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 I'll take it I'll take the dub okay so for the Cowboys professional football was originally brought to Dallas in the form of the Dallas Texans franchise in 1952 but when that team struggled mightily they folded after just one season leaving Dallas void of a professional team for their most beloved sport Seven years later, however, the city would get its franchise once again and would take full advantage of it. In October of 1959, Dallas was awarded an NFL expansion franchise with Clint Murchison, a rich Texas oilman, the majority owner. The original name for the team was the Dallas Steers, 
That didn't last long, though, with general manager Tex Schramm declaring it wouldn't be a good look for a football team to be named after castrated cattle. <laughs> this yeah. is when agreed. <laughs> the, this is when Murchison claims a new name came to him like a bolt from the blue. The Dallas Rangers, he declared, was a name oh. for a football team if there ever was one. And even though the Rangers' name was historical, proud, and tough, there was a problem with it. A local minor league baseball team was already named the Dallas Rangers. Oh. With the urging of Shram, the two agreed to change the name to avoid media confusion between the two teams. Finally, in March 1960, a new name had been chosen. On the phone with Shram, Merchantson still favoring the Rangers reluctantly decided to go with the Dallas Cowboys as the new name. It would be the only one from thereafter, though when the Dallas Rangers baseball team relo relocated to Canada in 1965, Murchison pushed for the Rangers' name once again, but to no avail. The Cowboys had already made their mark. Wow. I mean, the Rangers does make sense, but the fact that, like, in today's sports world, if there was, like, a new NFL franchise coming in and they're like, but there's a, a minor league baseball team with that well, yeah, name they would yeah. go i don't care we're we're yeah. gonna that's gonna be us <laughs> guess what there's like, not anymore yeah right like too bad wow okay and last and least the redskins yeah. so for starters this franchise wasn't always called that way in fact it wasn't even always located in washington this team was born as the boston braves in 1932 but his name was called to the Boston Redskins next season. It wasn't until 1936 that they moved to the nation's capital. The team was originally named the Boston Braves because they played on Braves Field. They later changed to the Redskins in an attempt to win more fans when they moved to Fenway Park, but the city wasn't that into football at the time, so they had to relocate. Team owner George Preston Marshall reportedly changed the name to avoid confusion with the homonymous baseball team, and retain Native American imagery of the team, while also trying to pay respect to coach William Henry, Lone Star Dietz, and several Indian players on the team. Notably, Dietz claimed to be a Native American, but was exposed by Indian Country Today Media Network as a white man in 2004. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. So that, that goes into... Uh, some pretty interesting things I found out about the Redskins. I'm going to read theirs and then grab a beer and then we'll get into the, the Cowboys thing. Okay. So the Redskins, funny enough, were also the last team to integrate. Integrate as in black players on the Correct. team. Correct. Okay. So the Redskins name has elicited controversy, but the question of whether George Preston Marshall was a racist should not. Marshall was a segregationist <laughs> who, who said on the record, we'll start signing Negroes when the Harlem Globetrotters start signing whites. Yeah, when he doesn't sound racist at all. <laughs> when the NFL integrated in 1946, Marshall did not sign a single black player until 1962 after the federal government forced him to do so. U.S. Secretary of the Interior Stuart Udall and Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy told Marshall that if he did not sign a black player, the government would revoke his lease on the D.C. Stadium which was then RFK Stadium, which sits on government land. And still sits there. The Redskins acquisced... Acquis, acquis, hey, they, don't there ask you me, go, Eric. There you go, <laughs> Eric. There it is. And drafted Syracuse running back Ernie Davis. When he refused to play for the team, Davis was traded to the Cleveland Browns for Bobby Mitchell, who is now in the Hall of Fame. So, as, as a diehard, lifelong Cowboys fan... Mm -hmm. I admittedly always thought that the Cowboys Redskins rivalry was solely based on the fact that it was Cowboys and Indians. You would think, but I, ha I'm sure that's a big part of it, but I, <laughs> I have how it, I guess, unofficially began. Okay. Originally the formation of an NFL expansion team in Texas was met with strong opposition by Washington Redskins owner, George Preston Marshall. Despite being located in the nation's capital, Marshall's Redskins had enjoyed a monopoly as the only NFL team to represent the American South for over 20 years since moving from Boston in 1937. Marshall was not about to give up the Redskins' status as the professional football team of Dixie without a fight. His intransigence 
came as little surprise to Dallas would-be owners Clint Murchison Jr. and Bedford Wynn. To ensure the birth of their expansion team, the men bought the rights to the Redskins' fight song, Hail to the Redskins, and threatened to refuse to allow Washington to play the song at games. (laughs) Meeting the song, Marshall changed his mind, and the city of Dallas was granted an NFL franchise. This early confrontation between the two franchises helped to trigger what became one of the more heated national football rivalries. So they were like, we don't want another team particularly because we're the team of the South. So well, they said, that's well, that's the problem you. I have. Well, I mean, back then it was 19, not even, cl- not even close to the South though. But if they were the most Southern team, I get why they claim that. Okay. Yeah. I can understand that too, but I yeah. mean, I guess it is below the Mason Dixon line. Technically, it's the South. We always make is, that argument. It is the South technically, but it's just funny how they're like, we don't want a, a another Southern team. And they're like, okay, well, we're just going to buy the rights to your fight song and you can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> now what? <laughs> so all those people slick at hail to the Redskins today. That shit Could have been hailed to the Cowboys. That shit would have been over with 60 years ago. Hail to the Cowboys. Hail victory. That's I just thought I that was, I thought that was hilarious. Like what, a, like what a spiteful thing. Like, now, so instead it, of, instead that, of, it makes me that makes me go back to the the Oprah acting it out like oh you won't you won't take my coupon I'm just gonna buy this grocery store mm-hmm, mm-hmm. instead of hail to old DC what would they say in they'd say the same thing in Dallas if they owned the song because and they played the song DC stands for Dallas Cowboys oh that's so good I thought I had a shirt. Do I have a shirt that says? I think I have a shirt that says that. It says DC stands for Dallas Cowboys. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe next episode. Hail to old Jerry. <laughs> it's 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 to hell with old Jerry. <laughs> Fucking crypt keeper himself. Man, tell you what, looks like old was that dude Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Mm-hmm. I only know that from SpongeBob. So we're going to do an all-time NFC East draft. Wait, let me say it. You say it. So we're going to do an all-time NFC East draft. I, yes. I just want to say it. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I always say it. <laughs> God, my goddamn division. I can't even say the last one. So with my first pick, NFC East draft, I am going to go at the quarterback. Fuck you. Position and go Donovan McNabb of the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. I'm not mad at you. I mean, I got to I got to do it, right? I don't know. Maybe. I think you got to do it. <sighs> it goes against everything I believe in. Oh, maybe you're doing something different than I thought you were going to do. Okay. Th- that I'll call an audible and I'll do what I think you thought I was going to do. Okay. And with my number one pick, uh, I'm going to go with my boy, Michael Irvin at wide receiver. Not what I thought you're going to do. Okay. Um, interesting. Okay. I met well, him at a strip club. I got to take him. My number two pick. I'm going to go running back Emmett Smith for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Okay. Um, Hmm. If I do, it, just, it like hurts to pick a red skin. <laughs> but with my number two pick, I'm going to go with running back John Riggins. Solid pick over Shady. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think I know what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, well, with my third pick, I'm going to go tight end for the New York Giants, Jeremy Shockey. Hmm. Maybe I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see if there's another one before I uh, call this audible. Just for the Giants? Uh tight ends for him 
Okay, so with that, with my third pick, I'm going to go with Giants tight end Mark Bavaro. Who? Mark Bavaro. When did he play? He's 61 now. Uh, let's see. Bavaro quickly established himself as a dominant force in the trenches during the gritty smash mouth era of the late eighties and early nineties, his two time mm. pro bowl and first team all pro selections in 1986 and 1987 are testaments to his tenacious blocking and pass catching abilities. Okay. Okay. I mean, so. I feel like I would have gone, uh, I guess if, if you want to sacrifice your receiver instead of getting Deshaun, I would have gone Chris Cooley. I already have a, you just hmm? what I already have a receiver. Oh, you're right. And I also of... took a redskin. <laughs> You've been paying attention. Oh, yeah, you did. Wait, so you took you know John can... and Michael. I'll switch it up. Let me switch it up. Now you have a giant. No, 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 no. That pick okay. is in. That is locked. Right. So now you got to go. go with your boy. Interesting. I'm not, that's what you're, I'm not that's what you're going it. with. Okay. Well, with my fourth pick at wide receiver for the Washington Redskins, I'm going to go Art Monk. As you should. Mm-hmm. And with my last pick, I'm going to go with Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Randall Cunningham. Yeah. Okay. I think this is the first one I feel confident in saying I did a little better. Uh, Who you took... We got Donovan, Emmett, Art, and Jeremy. Yeah, probably. A little bit better. I mean, they're all, they're both solid. I mean, I don't know if Bavaro's, he's probably not in the Hall of Fame. Not that shocky is, but I just had to take Michael Irwin. <laughs> I thought when you said you had to take, you're going to go Emmett Smith. That's when I think of a cowboy. I think yeah, Emmett well, that's Smith. initially, that's what I said. And then when you said that, I thought you thought I was going to go. Uh, no, I thought your original, I thought what you thought originally, not what I, not what you thought. I thought secondary. We didn't draft secondary. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we did, I'm going Sean Taylor. <laughs> okay. I'm and going, then, I'm going Deion Sanders and then I'm going Brian Dawkins. Okay. And then I'm going, uh, Eli Apple. Oh, weird. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, probably going. Oh no. shit. I, I I'm forgot going to Nandy. do it. I was going to say with my first pick in the NFC East draft, I'm going quarterback Jason Campbell. I'm fucking meant to say that. <laughs> yeah. You could have said a lot of things. Well, hopefully, well, not for you, but for their sake, uh, Jaden Daniels is not another first round bus quarterback for them. I feel like they've had quite a few of those. Yeah, I feel like the list is about to keep growing. Wait, did you specify if you were taking McNabb the Eagle or McNabb the Redskin? Um, well, it's NFC East, and if we're going based off of career, as we always have, Eagle. But did you specify? Because if not, then you broke the rules by taking two Redskins. Well, then I'll take Deshaun Jackson at wide receiver. Fair. <laughs> Damn, Fair. I should have done that. Fuck, I should have done that. <laughs> Actually, I could have taken Deshaun as a Redskin, too. Damn it. So then you took still two Redskins. <laughs> Damn, I could have. No, but I, what? I, and we've both kind of played with it is we've never gone for somebody that's like, ah, he was there for a couple of years. Yeah, no. Nah, right. I just didn't know if you specified because I until after the fact, I wasn't thinking like, oh, yeah, McNabb was there. I forgot. I may have said Eagles. I, I don't think remember. I think you did. Okay. Okay, we're back at it again with the highly anticipated, highly requested top ten sports superstitions of all time. Pretty so sure number I ten. I'm pretty sure I requested we don't do this. <laughs> number ten. <laughs> at number ten, I've got NASCAR has several superstitions, but notably doesn't allow peanut shells on the track. Wow. What a mind-blowing superstition. Oh, my God. No peanut shells on the track are allowed. No, that sir. Was... If, now, if you have cashew shells or if you have walnuts, you're good. No peanuts. Mm -mm. So that was ranked higher than pissing on your hands? That is correct. You should go to whatever this site is for all of the content you get. 
At number nine, I've got Vladimir Guerrero has his teammates help him dirty his own helmet. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a crazy list. This is insane. Can you elaborate? What does that even mean? Uh, so, like, hey, can you rub this in the dirt for me real quick? As long as Vlad played in the major league, uh, he was always sported a dirty pine tar covered helmet while at the plate. Um, how it got that dirty and grosser, then you may immediately think the Impaler's helmet is covered in dirt from the dugout, pine tar, and the spit of himself and his teammates. Before every season, Vlad leaves his helmet on the floor of the dugout while his teammates do whatever they want to it. Yikes. Go on. At number eight, I got John Henderson, NFL defensive tackle. Loves getting slapped across the face on game day. Wow. Incredible. You ever been slapped in the face? Uh, Yeah. By who? Same night, same night you got kicked in the nuts. You know what's funny? No, uh, <laughs> it's... She... That's the second time she did that. Now kicked that I think nuts? about it. Yeah. Or slapped me in the face. Okay. Need me in the nut. Well, I don't know if she kicked me or need me, but at like homecoming one year, she did it too. Why am I just now thinking of that? Crazy bitch. I've only ever been slapped in the face once. What'd you do? I think it was as simple as I don't think it would hurt if you slapped me in the face. Ah, uh, okay. Sounds that, that, that tracks. Yeah. yeah. It hurt. Um, number seven, I got Barry Fry peed in the corners of his home soccer stadium in order to get rid of evil spirits. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> Barry Fry peed in the corners of his home soccer stadium in order to get rid of evil spirits. Okay. So it's good, Barry but it's... It's... Okay. Yeah, so he was the manager of uh, Birmingham City in in the UK or in England um, from 93 to 96. So it's been a while, but... Wow. Yikes. Interesting. Okay. Uh, number six, Jason Giambi and his teammates wear a gold thong to bust out of slumps. They're busting out of Ooh. something. Oh, my. E. Uh, no comment. Uh, number five, we have Turk Wendell, who looks like a Chicago Cub in this picture, brushed his teeth in the dugout and chewed licorice while he pitched. Let's see. What number is that? That's number five. Okay. I know people that All right. brush their teeth in the bathroom at work after they eat lunch. <laughs> Number four, Kevin Romberg refused to turn right and had to touch any player that touched him first. Refused to turn right and had to touch any player that touched him first. So it's like what if he was it's like life was a lifelong game of tag and he was never it. Well, and he never turned right. So it says while on the field, if he had to move right, he would spin left. <clears throat> yeah. Haven't you ever heard uh, two wrongs don't make a right, but three That's lefts do? Wild. But like, <laughs> oh, I'm playing shortstop. I'm just going to move to my right three inches to get this ground ball. No, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a 360 spin to the left and get this ground ball. That's wild. Huh? We have to find some footage of him actually turning right and be like, jokes on you, nerd. A num at number three, um, a soccer team bathed in a crocodile and hippo infested river before a game, and it went just as well as you might expect. Back in two thousand eight, African football club Midlands Portland Cement <laughs> was instructed what? to take a <laughs> what <laughs> was instructed to take a cleansing dip into the Zambezi River by their coach. This was due to the team losing several games in a row and coaching staff felt the team needed a change of luck before taking on a rival club. The river is not a river someone should swim in, especially where they are located. The particular river where the team swam was close to Victoria Falls and had especially strong currents. Also, this part of the river was closed off since it was infested with hippos and crocodiles. One of the players drowned in the incident and Midlands lost their next match. Just tell me their, uh, their team name again. That is the Midlands Portland Cement. Okay. And <laughs> I mean, they're not C they're not like a contractor for like home builders. C E M E N T. Unless yeah, you pronounce that different in Africa. The Cements. I mean. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, there's a, there's a name. Oh my God. I'm going to butcher the hell out of this. Okay. Hit me. Um, Sergio Goy Kacheka relieved himself before every penalty kick taken against him. That's a goalkeeper. So every time if he was in penalty kick situation, he'd relieve himself before every kick. Like call a timeout or he just going. Nope. Right on the pitch. It says <laughs> Goya Cheka. Goya. Goyo Kacheka would empty his bladder right on the pitch. That's right. He peed before every kick taken against him. You know, it would suck if he had like a game where there was like 10 penalty kicks and he was just like leaking everywhere. And then the next week, LSU was playing like a away game there and Les Miles started eating the <laughs> turf that he pissed all over. That's all I got. Oh, wow. All right, what do we got? Number one. Oh. Number one, Leoto Machida drinks his own pee before every single fight. MMA fighter Leoto Machida is a headlining fighter at UFC bouts and is considered to be one of the best in the world, but he's a proponent of urine therapy and believes it has medical medicinal qualities. People think it's a joke. I never said in the United States because I don't know how the fans will react. I drink my own urine every morning, like a natural medicine. So he can believe it has medicinal qualities, but I'm pretty sure science says that can kill you. Yeah, buddy. Sure can. He's probably a flat earther. Scientologist. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, wow, that's already over? Those were so great. Oh my God. Do, you have, do you have 30 more? Do you have more? Hi, everyone. I just wanted to take a second to ask that you all hit those like and subscribe buttons. Or if you're an audio listener, go ahead and give the guys five stars. Thanks for listening. Now back to the Poor Choices show. Um, all right, I'm going to send you one, two, three, six pictures i want to see if you can guess the hidden meanings in these sports logos okay the first one is the nfl logo okay any ideas hidden meaning behind this logo yeah or hidden images in it just anything i mean i know the stars are for the divisions okay that's that's all it was oh um, okay because there used to be <laughs> actually hold on i think i have there used to be a lot more stars on the top half of the NFL shield, but it was redesigned in 2008 and the number of stars was cut, one for each of the league's eight divisions. Got it. Cool. Next one. <laughs> cool. <laughs> the next one is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've heard it, but I don't remember. Um, it's something with the three stars. Um, that makes sense. I don't know. One star for the big cities in Pennsylvania. It's something. I don't know. The three stars represent materials used to make steel. Yellow for coal, orange for iron, orange for iron ore, and blue for steel scrap. The logo is based on the Steelmark logo of the American Iron and Steel Institute. So that's orange because I would call it red. It does say orange, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it's definitely red, right? Maybe whoever wrote this article was colorblind. <laughs> it's the green, <laughs> the purple, and the <laughs> and the black. Yeah. Well, got, or, orange is coming in now. Okay, uh, Islanders has, um, I mean, the island in the logo. Okay, that's all I got. Okay, this is one of the cooler hidden things. If you look at the top of the eye in Islanders, it points to the exact location of the team's Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Oh, because it's like it turns blue. Yeah, and that's where they play. That's really cool. I thought that was pretty nifty. Mm-hmm. All right, the next, the next one, the, the last three are going to hit home. Okay. So the next one is the Capitals. Oh, <laughs> it's got the Capitol building in the breast of the bird. Okay, so I, I never knew that. I thought it was just like the shape of a W. Oh, for it like is that Washington. too. Yeah. And I thought that's all it ever was. Uh, let me see what it says. Do you see the Capitol building formed under the head of the eagle? 
Is that the Washington Monument shaded in blue above it? It could be. I mean, it's just a point. Maybe, maybe not. Apparently, hiding national landmarks and logos is a staple of D.C.-based sports teams. Yeah, let me see some Redskins then. Oh, yeah, that's got the... Yeah, there it is. I mean, that one's obvious. <laughs> the next one is the Washington <laughs> Wizards. Yeah, uh, obviously. <laughs> so I, d- I never knew that. I don't Washington think Monument. I ever really... Yeah. Just, just big and hard right in the middle there. Within the Washington Wizards redesign logo, there's a subtle representation of the famous Washington Monument. I like how they had to throw famous in front of right. that. <laughs> All right. The O's, hon. Um, damn, I'm in an O's shirt, too. Is a hidden meaning in this? Hold on. Let me look at it. So, okay. I'll let you, I'll let you gander. This one kind of hit me by surprise. Is it's can I get a hint? So this one isn't really hidden. It's more of a debate. Does the Oriole have its mouth closed and smiling or completely open? Mm. Because it doesn't connect. And I never realized that. So is it open and it's smiling? Like why like or is it they just didn't finish the logo? Now that you said that, I'll never not I know. See that? And I was excited about that. I was like, Chris is never going to forget this. You see, I'm he's like, s- eh. now that I see it, I'm going to say his mouth is open, open. Beca- because that orange outline is the whole logo. It's yeah. not part of the beak. It's the black right. line. That's the beak. And then there's no connection. So I'm going to say his mouth's open. Yeah. Okay. Also smiling though, at the same time. Yeah. Just mouth was- open. God, I can't unsee it now. I, don't, <laughs> I really, because in my head, I would say, oh, he's just smiling. But yeah. now that you said that, yeah. ugh, I don't Same. like it. Same. Um, You want a little sports thingy? Uh, Yeah. Then we'll, then we'll talk beer. Let's talk about sports. Um, sports. So I want to see if you could guess or if you knew how did uh, these sports terms get their name. Okay. Okay, so first one I got is a touchdown. Mm. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Does that have anything to do with being out of downs? Like there's no more downs to go. Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to say similar to how when a plane lands, it touches down. It's basically the team arriving at their destination. It's a very uh, educated guess. Um, But the term touchdown in American football comes from the sports early days when the rules were similar to rugby and required the ball to be grounded in the end zone for a touchdown to be scored. In 1889, the rules were changed so that the possession of the ball beyond the goal line was enough to score a touchdown, but the term remained. I like mine. Because <laughs> when about, you touch down, you're at your destination, and that's very your destination's true. the end zone. So, okay. How about a grand slam in baseball? Grand slam. Slam refers to the ball coming off the bat. Okay. And something about a grand gesture of you being able to trot around the bases. (laughs) So um, the origin of the term grand slam originated in the card game bridge, referring to a player winning every trick it carried over into baseball because it refers to a team scoring as many runs as possible in one at bat. So in bridge, you can get all the cards in one go. Right. Grand slam. Hmm. That's funny. My, my initial thought was cards, but I was oh. thinking like Royal flush. Okay. And I, I mean, was like, I don't know how that would equate. So. Okay. How about the term in golf birdie, a birdie. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. <laughs> well, if you're in the bush, you ain't getting a birdie. <laughs> no. Uh, I feel like I read something about this recently. I think I Googled a couple weeks ago, like, why are all the golf terms named after birds? 
Mm, mm -hmm. And I remembered reading this. Uh, Birdie, 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 birdie. I don't know. So the term birdie in golf originated in the U.S. in the early 20th century and is believed to have come from the American slang term bird, which in the 19th century meant anything excellent or wonderful. And golf players would call a good shot a bird and a particularly good shot that resulted in a score of one stroke under par was hence called a birdie. In what century did it become the word? Papa papa uma mau mau papa uma mau mau papa uma mau mau. So so what about an eagle? Uh, I didn't look that one up. <laughs> I guess not not albatross either. <laughs> yeah, I didn't look that up. Uh, last is one it, I got for you. Oh god, uh, is a bogey a bird? <laughs> no, it's a troll. Ooh, trolls, trolls have bogeys. bogeys. So hold on. I went I went back. So you know how they call planes and jets bird birds? No. Are you there? Did I lose it? Yeah. Like that's like I need a bird. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So in Star Fox for N sixty four, I remember I think it was Peppy, like they'd be flying behind you, like shooting down one of the enemy jets, and he'd be like, Got one bogey. So the bogey's a mm. bird. Maybe a bogey is a bird. Let me find out for you, David. Hmm. I got to fix this Alexa in here. Term bogey in golf comes from the late 19th century British song, The Bogeyman. And the song, <laughs> The Bogeyman, and it, The Bogeyman is a character who lives in the shadows and challenges the listener to catch me if you can. Golfers began to use the term bogeyman to describe the pursuit of the perfect score or bogey score. The term was coined in 1890 during a competition at the Great Yarmouth Club when a golfer named C.A. Wellman called another player a regular bogeyman. The term was also used to describe stroke play tournaments, which are now known as handicap or stableford competitions. Hmm. Might have okay. to uh, play that song during the podcast. Hush, hush, here comes the bogeyman at that time. <laughs> just while you're reading that whole thing, I just had this like epiphany about how like homosexual golf is. How like, is it? Because you, you're you outside all day with a bunch of dudes sweating, measuring how many strokes it takes to get your balls in the hole you want them to go in. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say that about football. You're out in the sun with a bunch of sweaty dudes tackling and rubbing on each other, trying to get a ball over a thing. No, because it's more violent. You're beating up other dudes. You're not measuring how many strokes it takes to hey, get man. your ball in a... Some guys are into that beat up thing. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Last one I got for you is um, a hat trick. Um, this was another one that I that I thought I read recently. Also has British origins. Just tell me. Oh, it take me forever. I can't even. I don't even know Aaron Brockovich. So the term hat trick originated in British cricket in 1858 to describe a bowler who took three wickets with three consecutive balls. As a reward for this achievement, the club would give the bowler a new hat, which is how the term got its name. You call them bowlers in cricket? I don't know. I don't play cricket. Interesting. That's not, I, I definitely didn't read that unless I read it on like Wikipedia or something. <laughs> and that's my fun little uh, sports term. Yeah, that was good. I like that. You. I'm there you go. Proud of my, uh, my touchdown thing. I thought I, I thought I had that. Yeah, that was pretty good. Apparently not. That was, that was pretty, pretty darn, darn good. good. Well, is your beer pretty darn good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is it? So this week, <laughs> I am drinking, I, I I don't know, you may have had it, the Upside Down. Let me see it. I don't think. Which when I saw it, I was like, oh, Stranger Things, I'll, I'll get that. Oh, I was thinking it was like a pineapple upside down kick. So it is a pineapple, <laughs> it is a <laughs> pineapple upside down cake inspired sour ale. 
Okay. No, I think I almost bought that one, but I okay. think I had uh, perused all of the space in my basket at the store, and I had no okay. more room for beer. <laughs> Sounds like a pineapple upside down cake. Well, it is a <laughs> pineapple upside down cake. <laughs> Fair enough. So this is brought to you by my boys at Hidden Sprails. Hash free over a It's brought to you by my boys at Hidden Springs Ale Works in Tampa. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. They they might be my all time favorite in the past twenty nine weeks. It sure seems that way. And drinking it, stand by. It's so good, dude. It's so good. It's so good. I'm gonna give it a nine point zero out of ten. It's sour. It's a little bit sweet with that cake part, and then it's got that pineapple tartness to it. Oh. Okay. Delish. Delicious. I don't know if I'm envious or jealous or uh, we'll just, we'll, victorious. We'll, well, I'm not victorious. <laughs> we'll preface with uh, what the hell my glass looks like. God damn, man. Hmm. So, <laughs> it's like fucking scrambled eggs. Mm, this week. Scrambled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead scrambled something yeah uh this week i have once again i think for the second week in a row from prairie artisan ales third third week in a row it's my third having it it's not third in a row it is third in a row it probably is we we had the sour patch three weeks ago sounds right yeah because yeah 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 old boy in uh in springfield yeah Mm -hmm. okay um yep Brewed and canned by Krebs from McAllister, blah, blah, Krebs. blah. Uh, it's called <laughs> Thai Delight Treat. Like Thai food? Like it's like peanut flavored? Sour ale with mango, flaked rice, and coconut cream. Hmm. Okay. It's okay. not spectacular. Mm-hmm. How not spectac- spectacular is it? <laughs> I can't talk. It's, <laughs> it's good enough to drink. Ah. Well, I mean, there's MMA fighters out there that would argue so is their piss. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's true. Um, did we have we set a threshold for like what's a score that I won't buy again? We haven't. Um, but if I had to pick one, I'd say anything I think, below. I think I know what you're going to say. Okay. I thought you were going to say 6.5 since that's your IMDb threshold. No. Well, below a 7 for IMDb for me is like, let me, if it's something I'm into, all right, I'm going to watch it. But if okay. it's below a 7, I'm very skeptical. Yeah, skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, is that Betsy? <laughs> Joe, you already took off. You got to go back to work, sweetie. <laughs> I was um, I was laughing out loud so hard when I watched it. Dude, I was so um, so hard. Let, 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 let me let me finish this and then I'll get to that. Uh, I'll give it a six eight. You won't buy it again. No, I, I'm not going to have any problem drinking it, but it's not on my to do list. Well, this is my second Hidden Springs Ale works that made over a nine, so I'm I'm very happy with them. Shout out to them. Hashtag them, David. Get them to sponsor this shit, man. So, you know what this is reminiscent of? No. You can... Let me see how much I can... Malibu when you're 15 stealing garden notes? No. Can you see in there? <laughs> uh, well, my monitor is currently off uh, for its okay. like 40 second little thing. It's Oh, wait. It's coming back on. Oh, shit. Hold on. Let's see if I can hold, hold it here without spilling. I even have a brand new HDMI cord I just plugged in today. I told Same you it's thing. the adapter, not the cord. Yeah, well. Can you see it? Oh, oh God. <laughs> it's reminiscent of a cement mixer. Oh, just like those guys from Africa. Yeah, the, the, the wherever they're from. It was like two city names or something. <laughs> mm. Well, before uh, we finish with our Ask Reddit... You have a game for me or a question or a trivia? Yeah, or a, a, little, a little trivia kind of, kind of, John. Okay. I want you to guess the top 10 fantasy scores of all time. 
scorers per season. Okay. So okay. like 2000, whatever this guy was number whatever. one. Right. Okay. Okay. So not like all time, but just like, well, it's that time of year and you're still not doing any fantasy. So I'll give it my, my best crack. I gotta, I gotta, no, I'll do fan. I still gotta send the pickums text. You already sent it. Ugh. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta send the individual ones. Dude, it it's not like you, fun. It sounds like you have like in one hand, you have like a knife and in your left hand, you have just like, like a bunch of like, it's not, a, know, like, it's not a good time. Look at that. Like, there's like grass and shit and you're just like scraping like foliage, 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 foliage. Can you see that? It's like if whipped cream was yellow and sucked. That's what she said. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Back to our disgusting. regularly scheduled broadcast. Yeah. Okay. Hit me. I thought you were guessing. What year? Oh, there's a lot of years. Wait, what? The way I heard it was you're going to say, hey, this year, who scored the most? No, I have the top 10 fantasy scoring seasons of all time. Oh, so who were those top 10 players? Right. And the okay. year. Well, the I year know, I probably... can't, yeah, I can't get the year, okay. um, but I'm going to guess about, the players. Okay, so I'll I'll give you this. There's, I think, six players. Out of the 10? Yeah. Okay. If that helps. A little bit. Um, who do you think was the best? The number the number one fantasy all, scoring all season of scorer? all time? I'm going to throw this out of left field. I'm going to say Drew Brees. Drew Brees is not in the top 10. Really? Even with really? his six touchdown? Okay. Um... Okay, I'm going to go Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is not in the top 10. Okay. I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is number 10. Okay. Oh, hold on. So Patrick Mahomes is number 10 at 417.1 points in 2018 and number 9 with 417.4 points in 2022. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is number two with 471.2 points in 2019. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Peyton wasn't top 10. That's wild. Um, there are no other quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Okay. That helps a little bit. Helps a little bit. Um, I'm going to go Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is not on the list. Not on the list. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is not on the list. Not on the list. There is one receiver on the list. One receiver? I'm going to say that receiver is Julio Jones. It is not Julio Jones. It's not Julio. I'm going to say that receiver is... Ooh, could be. Ooh, Deshaun Jackson. Nope. Think. Uh, think a couple years ago, almost broke a record. The record was held by someone that I think across every social platform we've been shunned for not selecting last draft. Mm -hmm. Almost broke. Oh, Calvin Johnson. That's the record holder. That's the record holder. Who almost broke it. Uh, what's the record? Uh, what was the record? Receptions, maybe? Stand by. Is Mike Evans on the list? He's not. Cooper Cup. It's Cooper Cup. Okay. Okay, so how many do I have left? How many players total? There is three. So you have number 10, number 9, Cooper Cup is number 7, and you have McCaffrey at 2. So you still have 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. You have 6 left. Each of them are on here twice. Number 1, Fudge. 
Um, what year was number one relevant? A lot of years. years. I mean, recently or he's done been retired. Um, kind of both. Let me give. I'll give you the uh, years active. How's that? Does that work? Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, 2001 to 2011. Adrian Peterson. Fuck me. Adrian Peterson is not on the list. What? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's insane. <clears throat> Let me give you... This might help. Let me give you the stats this year for, for the number one guy. Oh, he played this year? You said 2011. No, let me give you the stats the year that he... Oh, okay. Set the record for this number one. Okay. Um, he had 1,815 yards, 28 touchdowns. LT. LT. <laughs> Fuck. LaDainian Tomlinson is number one at 481.1 yeah. point, points in 2006, and he See, is my- also number five in 2003 at 443.8 points. My fantasy brain needs to go back and think about these guys because, like, I'm thinking more, way more current. Okay. Uh, Are any of the guys left still playing? No. Okay. How about um, Dave? How about, I th- Dave? Th- I've I've said both their names in um, previous episodes. Yeah, different segments we've done. I'm going to say Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk is number three at 459.9 in 2000 and number eight at 419.7 in 2001. So I got one guy left. One guy left. Uh, Is it Marshawn Lynch? No. It's not Marshawn. I think I said Marshawn. You didn't. Correct. Um, I'll give you another clue. I didn't say this guy's name in a draft. Like a happy birthday? Nope. I'll take you way back. And it's funny because I, for some reason, was I think I listened Did through Clinton the Portis. No, I think I listened through our episode today, and it jumped to another episode, and I listened to it, and it was this episode. He was a forgotten NFL player that I picked. Forgotten NFL player, Curtis Martin. No, I don't think I said him. That would no. have been a good one though. Yeah, he's forgotten. <laughs> he is. Yeah, forgot about him. Um. Maurice Jones drew. No. Same ish time frame. This guy, well, this guy played from 97 to 2007. Spent his first four years in Baltimore. So from 97 to 2001, Jamal Lewis? Nope. He did have a thousand yards rushing in 98, though. For Baltimore. For Baltimore. And he was on the Super Bowl team? 2001? Uh, nope. Oh, that would have been technically 2002, but it was the 01 yeah. season. Okay. Oh, Priest Holmes. Priest Holmes. Fuck. Is number four at 445 and 03 and number six at 440.7 and 02. Wow. Wow. So I have the second overall pick this year in our draft, right? The money draft with Joe and all the boys. That's believe this or not. 16 years. This is the 16th year we've done this fantasy team. Who do I take at number two? Uh, judging by this list, I'd say LaDainian Tomlinson. <laughs> <laughs> and at number two pick, I'm going to take no LC, please. Take him. Uh, well, I don't know. Who's going one? I, it's got to be McCaffrey, right? It's going to break, dude. So the this number is the highest two, pick you've had? It is in a long time. I'm typically like, bottom of the barrel so according to the the experts if McCaffrey goes I should take CD lamb that would be extremely retarded considering he doesn't have a contract and the next pick is Tyree kill number three hmm. who's aging At, after that it That's becomes not a, a bad little, pick it's not bad Tyreek's not bad um the next two best running backs, according to the experts, are Brees Hall and Bijan Robinson. I wouldn't pick either of those. Those are third round guys to me. No, they're, they'll be gone in the they'll be gone in the first. Yeah, they will, but they're not gonna produce as they should. 
Um, the Jets so you, are going to rely a lot less so it, on the run game. It sounds like you'd take Tyreek at number two. I want to say I'd take CD, but when's your draft? The 3rd of September. Which is a Tuesday. No, Monday. I hope for a contract by then. I don't I don't know. So he hasn't been showing up for anything, nothing like that? Like, he's just not doing I think, anything? I think he's holding out, as he should. But it's... He deserves the money, but if he wants to stay in Dallas, he needs to take less because you got to understand all of the guys we have to pay. Mm-hmm. I'm paying this dude twice as much as I'm paying CD mm-hmm. because as this, you should. this dude can do it on his own, whereas CD has to rely on someone getting him the ball. So, mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Baltimore needs a number one receiver. <laughs> you see Lamar Jackson got waived today? Waived what? Like, hello? From the roster. What does that mean? Uh, when you get waived is when a team lets you go. Don't get too nervous. Oh, the Carolina Panthers cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> Did I make you nervous? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> the first thing I said is, no, not the Baltimore Ravens yeah, quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> no, we could definitely use a number one receiver. So if you want to send CD our way, we'll take him. I don't think he'd want to go there, dude. He might. I think he's uh he's getting to like diva standpoint because of his production. And A, he's not going to have a quarterback that'll get him the ball. And B, with Derrick Henry, he's not going to get. Well, here's my thing with Baltimore. The exposure he should. Our our two rings that we've got have always come with a freaking beastly, beastly running back in the backfield with Jamal Lewis and Ray Rice. Like, Like two, like A plus best in the league running backs in their heyday. And now we have Derek, who may, it might not be his heyday, but he's top three running backs in the league, if I had to say. Uh, maybe, maybe top five. five. Yeah. So it's it's one of those that's like, oh, we have we had, we just have a really young, 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 young offensive line. It's also going to be interesting because typically you see when you have a mobile quarterback, you also have a speedy running back. So they complement each other, whereas these two are going to contrast each other. And it's interesting to see how you guys are going to play that. I think it's going to work very beneficial. Lamar has also not been as much of a, let me just tuck and run kind of guy the past (laughs) couple of years. He's slowly learning to be a pocket passer slowly. As far as the passing part goes, well, when he throws the ball, I go, who knows who that's going to. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, it very well could work. It just would be interesting to see how you're going to play that yeah i mean it's if you can get derrick henry just a little bit of steam behind him like as long as he can get his legs moving good luck to you but if you can stop him in the backfield then you're good but if i mean lamar jackson derrick henry on an option huh? <laughs> like like yeah. they've already made it past the line of scrimmage and they're five yards past and they're both just moving how do you well, what do you it depends on the option though because that's why it typically like a speedy back compliments because if Lamar's going out and he's about to get hit, he pitches it to the speedy guy who can make up those three yards behind the line real quick. Right. Whereas if you have Derek, if he bulldozes someone, then great, but he's not as quick. So it's either going to be a gain of eight or a loss of four. Or you flip it and hey, we ran the ball well, it's already flipped times. to him. No, no, no. You, you flip it as in like we're ground and pounding, wearing out your defense. And then all of a sudden you got to cover and try to get to Lamar Jackson, who last year already showed he could just make 15 seconds worth of, I'm going to pass it at some point and let my receiver go. But at some point after we've already worn out your defense with Derrick right. Henry, which could be, and most likely is what their game plans are going to be is like, let's tire them out and then have Lamar just do what Lamar does. We're going to learn. They're going to learn. They're both going to learn. We'll see. We'll see. I'm intrigued. Game one, I'm not too happy about, but we'll see. Well, the Lions did it last year. You can do it this year. Well, you, you saw my text about, have you seen the week one games? I thought you were just talking about your week one game. No. So I sent it in our, our Pick'em's chat. I was like, week one looks tough. 
and it's tough. Like pick ems, like the pick Are you the sure winners. it wasn't the fantasy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Send it in our group chat. Oh. It's it's tough. I don't know, laddie. It's a tough one. Oh, I'm out of beer. Oh, that's sad. I actually I'm almost inclined to find I found this headset I kind of want to get, but I I also in my head I'm going, well, you spent all that money on these audio technicas and what's the one you want to get? Um they're God, what's the name of it? I know the model number. Oh, what the fuck's the name of it? It's DT nine hundred. If you just Google like DT nine hundred headset. TT900 Pro. Why? Just because like the outside of them is... So one, they're supposed to be like the most comfortable studio headsets that are available. And then two, the outside doesn't have any kind of material. So you can actually hear yourself talk where when I talk like here... You you gotta hear it through the... Yeah. No, I can't even hear it through that. So I'm just talking and it's like already... It's just masked. She looks she Set. looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> so she looks fake. <laughs> oh my goodness. You want to smile for Uncle Chris? Oh man, fucking thunder thighs. Damn. Thunder thighs. <laughs> I'm the Michelin baby. So at what age do we get a haircut? Mm-hmm. What age do we get a haircut? Well probably eight. <laughs> Eight. Eight. It's gonna be down no, to our feet. Old. <laughs> <laughs> it might be down to our feet next month. Yeah. Is that your it's uncle Chris? Time. Hi, Zoe. Oh, uh, She's a girl. Hi, baby girl. Put her bings in here. Hi, baby girl. girl. Who is it? She's like, who Hi. the fuck is this guy? Hi, Zoe. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I can justify two hundred and seventy. Even if I didn't just buy some two hundred and seventy dollars for. Uh, no, they're only one seventy. Uh, you looking at the DT nine nineties then? Oh, that's it. Yeah, DT nine nineties. The DT nine hundred is two seventy. Yeah, nine nineties. Okay. So, so the outside is there's like just there's barely anything there. It's just the material yeah, that see, the headset's oh, made yeah. of. So I could hear myself talk. Where now it's like you could already I feel like hear I, yourself talk. Nah, but it's like I feel like I have a cold. Like like I can't. You know what I mean? Because no. I can't hear I can't hear myself talk on my headset because my gain's down so low. So there see that monitor button on your uh the one to yeah, the right? Yeah, that turns you up. Uh yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now if I turn my gain to here, I can hear myself talk. You're gonna break my <laughs> you're gonna break my software if you do that. I already had to close out of this logic shit. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking about it. We'll see. Oh, you got quieter. Oh, I can turn it up. Uh, I want you to go where you are now next episode, but for the time being, go back to where you were so I don't have to cut the track. And I think I'm back where I was. Do I sound where close, I was? Close enough. Okay. I think you're a little okay. lower, but that's good. Bayer Dynamics. They make pills, right? Bayer? That's oh, who that's it is. B- that's B-A-Y-E-R. It's like, it's like, it's like Bear Heiner or Bear Heiner or something like that. It, what? You want me to take it for a second? Yeah. We'll postpone Reddit. You hang out with your daddy. I mean, I can ask it while you hold her. Yeah, go for it. So this week <laughs> on Ask Reddit, I have what is the best comeback to an insult that you've ever heard or given? Hmm. Is it de- uh, depends on the insult. Hit me with the inspiration. Someone yelled out in Walmart, I'm not ashamed of who I am. Another voice echoed. But your parents are? That's your parents' job. In the city once, I heard two guys get into a fight about something dumb, and one guy screams, your mother's a fucking slut. And the other screams back, your mother's an excellent cook. And the first guy's brain paused, and that was that. <laughs> <laughs> like what do you what do you do like it's like your goal like you go in you go into this feud with like okay i'm coming at him he's coming at me and you're like your mom's a slut and he's like yours can cook mm-hmm. and you're like <laughs> all right it's like aol trying to connect 
I told an elderly I never yeah, I told an elderly man that his zipper was down and he replied, if it can't get up, it can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Such a weird thing to hear while holding her. <laughs> some bloke yelled, you're a whore at some girl. Cut right through the music. She clapped back super fast with, and I still wouldn't fuck you. No? Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. good. Um, my grandma got into a fight at the grocery store with a guy who told my nine-year-old brother to move the fuck out of the way. Okay. The, there we're going at it. They were going at it, and his final words were, suck my dick, bitch. She said across the store, if I could find it, bitch. Okay. Okay. Babe, if you keep lifting weights, you're going to look like a man. It has worked for you. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's, those are divorce words. <laughs> customer at a bar to bartender. If you lost 20 pounds, I'd ask you on a date. Bartender to customer. If I gained 20 pounds, would you never talk to me again? <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Uh, kid, where are you going, pussy? Friend, your mom's house. Kid, my mom lives the other way, idiot. Friend, nah, I meant your real mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, this is from the movie Aliens. Hey, Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No, have you? Brain derped with the film title. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. Um. This one, this was from Jimmy Carr. Is um, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mom's teeth. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Once I heard someone okay. respond to an insult with, I could agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. That's something you would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely. Sounds right, up, sounds right up my alley. On an Indian roast show, there were two bald twin brothers, and the roaster told them, you two confuse me on a biological level. You two look like testicles, but you are both assholes. <laughs> hmm. That's pretty good. That is good. Uh, back in 2020, I was walking along the waterfront with a friend. We were wearing masks for COVID and some unmasked guy comes up to me and says, hey, are you a doctor? Because I got this funky looking fungus on my penis I want you to look at. Me without missing a beat replied, yeah, actually, I'm an amputation specialist. Let me go get my snips and I'll sort that out for you. I've never seen a shit eating grin disappear so fast. The bully says, your wiener's the size of a Tic Tac. The kid says, that's why your mom's breath smells so good. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was playing Call of Duty and some lad was talking about how all the girls and female teachers at his school wanted to suck his dick. Someone else on voice chat said, so what's it like being homeschooled? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, uh, kid was making fun of me for wearing glasses. So I pulled them off and yelled, at least I can take them off, but you're always ugly. <laughs> <laughs> So the best one that I've heard wasn't really too an insult. Yeah. But it was when I was in tech school, when I had first met Tally, and we all went out downtown San Antonio one night. We ended up staying at like a Motel 6 because it was close. And we went out and we like, everybody wanted to find like hookers or strippers or something. So we went out and we were like hitchhiking on like a five lane highway at like 2 a.m. and realized it was a bad idea. So we start, <laughs> start walking back to the motel and Tally calls us like hooker line or whatever. And he's like, they answer and they're like, hey, this is so and so, blah, 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 whatever. And he's like, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking for a real dirty slut. And she, and she went, sorry, your mom's not working tonight and hung up. Ooh. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's, that's pretty good. Ooh, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mine's not really funny. It just seemed interesting. So, okay. Uh, so to finish up, my ask Reddit is: What is something that no matter how it's explained to you, you just can't understand how it works? Um. Aside from the internet and like routers and modems, 
Uh, I would say like nuclear physics. So is it just the internet and nuclear physics? I don't know. That was yeah. a, a kind of a lot of these here. So we've got space. It's so big that it's unfathomable. And I think it's expanding into what? How did it start? It's all so a mind the, fuck. That's a um that's a segment that I actually have in my notes that we're gonna discuss at some Space. point. Mm-hmm. Um we've got that the speed of light cannot be exceeded. It's a finite speed, and yet nothing can go faster than that. Well, according to uh Christopher Nolan and Matthew McConaughey, time time can travel faster than that. We'll have to get into that one too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got electricity. Just in general? Yeah. Just how one wire can give this much or this much or I mean I get it. I feel like that's an easy Google answer though. Yeah. Uh I've got how airplanes can be so big and heavy but still fly. Yeah. Uh two huge gigantic fucking engines and aerodynamics. Yeah, but it's just propellers that are spinning. Like it makes sense to think about it in water, but like no, air? they're not they're not propellers on jets. They're just engines. And they work how? Uh turbines. That's all I got. Which is a big propeller. It's internal. I think propeller wouldn't propeller mean it's external? Like Impeller. It's, it's it's I don't know. I'll tell you, all you're doing is making me understand it less. <laughs> what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, I've got a, uh, I'll go for me. It's the whole transformation from caterpillars to butterflies. I understand what they do, but it's the most alien shit ever that a worm it just is. decides to rearrange itself into a winged creature that looks it is. nothing like it did before. It's fucking crazy and it's wild and it's weird. Yeah. Uh, I've got magnets. Uh, don't understand how they have that physical force locked up in them. Seems to break the laws of physics or something. I don't trust them. I thought you were going to say magnets, bitch. Yes. Uh, oh, should have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This dude said, I got a bachelor's degree in physics and then worked in geophysics research group, did some grad school, and it took me until 30 to understand why it's colder at higher elevation. Why is it? I don't know. He didn't explain. So I'm still confused. Less... Oxygen makes it colder? Maybe. Yeah, that that could actually, because Earth's atmosphere is what, like 80% nitrogen? <laughs> okay, something like sure. that. Something like that. So maybe the higher you get, less oxygen. Yeah, that would make sense then, because nitrous is going to make, ni- nitrogen yeah. is going to make it colder. So yeah, that would make sense. Okay. I'll trust you, Aristotle. Listen, don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one, this one is mine. Uh, it's crypto mining and the whole blockchain. Yeah. I've never got that ever. Like, Hey, let me hook up this thing. That's going to mine crypto, which, what does that even mean? First off? I know what it means. I just don't know why it means. Hmm. Uh, why people and animals know when someone is watching them. I mean, anyone with a smartphone, they're always watching you. Yeah, well, that's a little that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, animals definitely not because yeah, yeah, you no, know, because you're out hunting and you make a noise well, to make that animal yeah react so you can shoot them in the correct area. They don't I'll tell know you you're what when, when the dogs are taking a shit, they know I'm looking at them. <laughs> I've got Roman numerals. Just write it normal. <laughs> well, to be fair, that was normal back when they were writing it. I've got not running the ball with Marshawn at the goal line. That's uh Yeah. That's that's some scripted bullshit is what that is. Yeah. I've got how my cat always knows exactly when I'm about to sit down with a snack. Your cat or your dog? Well, this person cat me, dog, your pet. I mean, I've only had one cat in my life, and she was never a, oh, you're eating food? Oh, what's that? Never. Also, she was a horrible cat, so maybe mm. that's why. Don't talk about her like that. 
she's terrible. No, mm. she was terrible. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, literally. That's a funny story. We'll save for another time. <laughs> I want to type that in my notes. Yeah, put poop after it. Holly's death poop. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is how any esports kid expects to get laid. Oh, I mean, never. Fuck them. Fuck the esports kids. Have a good night, y'all. So. I just want to meet the baby. Yeah. Although I know when I hold her, I'm going to be like this like weird like... <laughs> Like how do I do? Th- how do I do this? And all you guys are going to say is just support her neck, support her neck, and I'm just going to be like, okay, she's moving. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and Belle's going to be there.